Fate is a Funny Thing by Tangled Forever, Chapter 8, You and Me as One. By the time Raven, Dexter and Apple's feet touched the pavement, the rest of their brigade had already landed and were celebrating amongst themselves. One powerful princess in particular, upon seeing her brother and quite possible future sister-in-law, rushed over to greet them. We did it! Darling themed, giving Raven a hug before turning to her twin. Is everything okay? Yeah, we're fine. Daring assured her. I've already sent Legend back to the clearing for the rest of the girls. Good. Raven couldn't quite read the look in the prince's eyes, but his smile, this rare, sincere smile that only showed itself under the most special circumstances, was all she needed to know that he was genuinely happy for her. I'm proud of you, Raven. Raven laughed at the nickname, reaching up to give him a hug. Thanks, staring. <laughs> At that moment, the school's battered doors burst open as a number of previously imprisoned students rushed towards them, including Ginger, Humphrey and the rest of the school's Wonderlandian students. Raven! Oh, you're alive! And you're here! Ginger hugged her tightly, closely followed by Humphrey. But how? The way any sleeping curse is broken, Raven responded, not caring if she sounded completely corny. Dexter woke me. Weird a spell! It was, so it was Dexter that woke you. But then, you two really are meant to be together. Bunny beamed. Alistair's hand grasped tightly in her own as she finished his sentence. Well, duh. Kitty crossed her arms loosely, wearing her signature mischievous smile. I always knew they'd be perfect together. While the others giggled at the statement, Dexter and Raven could only blush and share a shy smile before they were interrupted by a series of roars. From the surrounding skies, the dark dragons descended, landing among them and their own lighter, both in heart and coloration, dragons. Many students screamed or backed away in fear, yet surprisingly, the creatures made no move to attack. One dragon in particular landed just a few short paces in front of Raven, her proud head barely hovering off the ground as she cautiously approached. Fabel nudged Raven's arm, motioning towards the skittish animal. That's your mother's dragon, Jinx. Raven turned back to the dragon before slowly taking a step forward. Hey, girl. It's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. Jinx eyed her for a moment, unsure what to make of this unfamiliar compassion, before leaning into the girl's outstretched hands. The rest of the students kept their distance, still wary of the imposing creatures, until another, much larger shadow passed overhead. Slow and steady, Legend lowered herself to the kingdom floor, then stretching out a mighty wing for her passion passengers to slide down. Uh, what happened to the dark dragons? Briar asked as she, her cousin and the others walked all over to the rest of the group. Nina adding, I know, they're completely tame now. That doesn't make any sense. Poppy argued, putting a hand on her hip. I mean, they were literally evil at birth. Of course, Raven muttered mostly to herself, but loud enough for the others to hear. Mum was in the stables with us when the eggs hatched. She must have amplified my spell to try to turn them all evil. Oh, you poor things. Without the slightest trace of fear, Rosabella approached one of the dark dragons and gently pet his neck. The creature eagerly bent his mighty head down for a cuddle, giving her a joyous squawk. Apple smiled a little as she relaxed. At least she's back in the mirror realm. She can't hurt anyone from in there. A wave of guilt washed over the young sorceress as she found her arm as she rubbed her arm as she turned to her roommate. Apple, you apologise to me, but I never got a chance to apologise to you. Apologise? The blonde's nose scrunched in confusion. For what? For everything. I brought all this evil to ever after high. As soon as I found out I didn't want to play my part, I should have run far away. If I had, none of this would have happened. Apple's face was unreadable, a brief silence filling the air between them. You're right. None of this would have happened. Raven winced at the bluntness of her words until Apple took her restless hands. Looking up, she saw nothing but gratitude in her roommate's eyes, watching her as her coral pink lips tugged into a smile. We never would have found out the storybook of legends was a fake. Never would have found the real one. 
or saved Wonderland. Everyone would still be forced to live their pre-written destinies. And most of all, I would never realise I don't need my destiny to be happy. And now I've finally got my own destiny figured out. Maybe I can start helping others with theirs. Raven smiled back, glad beyond words that she and Apple were finally back on the same page. Well, I think that sounds fabulous. With that, Apple pulled Raven in for a hug, quietly thanking her lucky stars that she had her best friend forever after back. The yin to her yang, as Maddie once put it, like Elphaba came to Glinda. Complete opposites. Neither perfectly good in their own right. That somehow blended like night and day into one beautiful sunrise. A glorious new beginning. As do I. A tender voice agreed, approaching them from behind. Apple turned and then smiled as she rushed, rushed to the woman. Mom! Snow White welcomed her daughter with open arms, quietly grateful to be back in her human form, and hugged her tightly. Oh, Apple! Thank goodness you're all right. I'm sorry, Mum. I should have told you about the evil queen. Or better yet, I shouldn't have let her get under my skin in the first place. No, Apple Butter. I'm the one who's sorry. The queen took a step back to meet her daughter's gaze, lightly placing her hands on the girl's shoulders. I put so much pressure on you to be the perfect queen everyone believes me to be. I never should have expected you to live up to my image. Especially when I myself fall short. Apple smiled a little at her words. Her whole life, she'd always strived to match her mother's example, falling into a state of panic that when it didn't seem to be happening. To hear her mother, the fairest of them all, admit that even she wasn't perfect. It was like having a dragon lifted from her shoulders. All I ever wanted is to make you proud. You already do. You are going to make a wonderful queen someday, Snow assured her, raising a hand to cup her daughter's cheek, before turning to smile at Raven. You both are. Raven smiled back in silent thanks. She had a lot to learn, for, for obvious reasons, but she'd never be one to back down from a challenge. Anyway, I better head back to the castle. I have a lot of catching up to do, Snow explained. Unable to help a chuckle of her, at her own, um, incompetence. Apple laughed too, and gave Brayburn's neck a pat. Want us to give you a lift? It's all right, my little dove. My driver's already on his way. He'll be here any moment. As if on cue, a limo appeared in the distance. Long and sleek and fit for a queen. But in spite of its royal furnishing and flawless polish, something was evidently quite amiss. Apple's brow furrowed in confusion, eyeing the vehicle's dark paint. Unable to tell at this distance if it was dark violet or simply black, I thought all our cars were white. They are, Snow replied just as puzzled as her daughter. The rest of the students followed their ruler's gaze until Cedar's eyes widened in excitement. Wait a splinter, isn't that? The car came to a stop at the edge of the driveway and a middle-aged man climbed out of the back. His face etched with worry, his royal attire re-stained with tears, and his crown absent from his head of thinning hair. Dad! Stepping away from her boyfriend, Raven hurried to the man's side, surprisingly agile in her Dragon Games attire. Raven! Bright blue eyes filling with relief, the good king caught, caught his daughter as she jumped into his arms, ignoring the pain in his ageing bones as he held her close, a fresh wave of tears rolling down his cheeks. Oh, my sweet princess! I thought I'd never see you again. I can't believe you're here. I came as soon as I heard. The king put her back on the feet and then gently cupped her chin between his finger, index and middle fingers and his thumb. Oh, Raven, I should have been here. Raven held his wrist in her hands, leaning into his touch. Dad, there's nothing you could have done if you were here. Don't worry. I'm fine. Of course I worry. You're my little girl, he replied as he hugged her, though I suppose you're not mine anymore. Raven pulled back a bit, and Ivar raised at his words. What do you mean? Raven, you and I know that curse better than anyone. 
he reminded her, then shrugged a shoulder as he gave her a soft, bittersweet smile. So, do you know him? The sorceress couldn't help but blush. Her lips curved into a gentle smile. Unlike her mother, she never felt the need to hide anything from her father and could comfortably talk to him about almost anything. Yet, in all that time, she couldn't recall all the subject of boys ever coming up. It was a lot less straightforward than she had expected. But at the same time, there was no one else in the fairy tale world she'd rather be introducing her dad to. You will. Taking his arm, Raven led him to where the rest of her friends were waiting. One special friend in particular. Dexter, this is my father. Dad, this is Dexter. The good king allowed himself a fraction of a second to size the boy up and then gave him a grateful bow. Thank you, Dexter, for saving my daughter. You're welcome. Not that Raven needs saving very much. Dexter smiled fondly at the girl beside him, gently shaking his hand. The ageing king couldn't help but chuckle. Indeed she doesn't. But I'm glad to know she is in safe hands when she does. Don't worry, Dad. I am. Raven assured as she rested her head on Dexter's shoulder, pretending not to notice the sudden blush that appeared on her prince's face. The good king gave the young couple a respectful nod, pleased beyond words with fate's choice of suitor for his dear princess. Before he turned to observe the ragged school, a low whistle passed between his lips. She really went all out this time, didn't she? Snow hummed in agreement, also looking the building over. Definitely. It'll take weeks to repair all of this. If I may, your majesties, Sleeping Beauty's daughter interjected, politely enough but without giving either a chance to object. There'll be time for that. The Evil Queen's gone, and we have Raven back. If that, that doesn't call for a party, nothing does. Well, you do throw the most excellent parties, Raven teased, nudging her friend's arm. Briar simply tipped her sunglasses, more than happy to admit it. You'd better believe it. The rest of their friends laughed at the comment until someone else responded with her own suggestion. And in the meantime, maybe you'd be up for another round of dragon games. The young sorceress shared a playfully sarcastic look with her boyfriend's sister before the pair smirked at the blonde. Ha! <laughs> Don't worry, I promise I'll play by the rules this time. Apple's voice trailed off as she sheepishly rubbed her arm, earning a smile from her best friend forever after as her pale cheeks flushed a tender pink. That all sounds great, you guys. But first, Raven turned, her gaze focused all but uncertain as she looked towards the school's tallest tower. There's something I need to take care of. End of chapter. Hi, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. I did. Sorry if I stumbled a few times there. I'm still getting the hang of this channel and I've been here for months. <laughs> I really love that. I love that you can see the differences and similarities between Apple and Raven. And I just love Dexter and Raven as a couple. I think they're so sweet together. And Raven's reunion with her dad and Apple's with her mum and everyone just being relieved that Raven's okay. Dexter's right. Raven really does get to reap what she sowed and it's just beautiful. Personally, I loved Dragon Games, but I prefer this ending to it. But we're not quite at the ending just yet, are we? We've still got the last chapter to go. So I'll see you in another one of my videos. Bye, my guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell to get notified for whenever I upload a new video. And remember to have a good day, night, or whatever time zone you are in. Bye!